In today's video, we'll be covering Genesis chapter 23, which deals with the death and burial of, of Sarah. <laughs> In editing this video, I felt like the Lord wanted me to share a message for grieving parents who, uh, who in my case, you grieve the loss of family members like my parents. So I invite you to stay to the end. I believe you will be blessed. So the death and burial of, of Sarah. Sarah. Yep. Okay. Now Sarah lived 127 years. These were the mm. years of the life of Sarah. She lived a long life. She's the only one. Seven years after the birth of the, her son. Right. Wow. She's the only woman in the Bible that God speaks this type of uh, news about. Okay. How long she lived. Sarah died in a place called Kiriath Arba. That's in Hebron, mm -hmm. in the land of Canaan. And that means the race of the giants. So there were still giants around at that time, the mm. nebulum. Okay, Neph Nephilim. Then Abraham, okay, so Abraham went in to mourn for Sarah and weep for her. It mm. is okay to weep for your loved ones. It yeah. is okay to grieve. There's a time to grieve. There's a time to weep. Yeah. It's not a sign of weakness when you grieve and cry. I mean, I had somebody yeah. crying with me about a month ago, and I said, your daughter is just buried four months ago. Cry. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. You're grieving, you know, don't feel guilty that you're crying. Yeah. Um, so he did, he did mourn, he did mourn Sarah, Abraham. Then mm -hmm. Abraham rose from before his dead and he spoke to the sons of Heth. Okay. The he what? That the Hittite. Yes. Yes. I did look that up too, Heth. I have that written down here somewhere, what it actually means. But, um, well, actually, Heth help. is the father of the <laughs> <laughs> yes. <like> that. <laughs> All right. So he says to him, I am a stranger and a sojourner among you. Give me a burial site among you out of my sight. The sons of Heth answered Abraham. Oh, Heth means trembling and fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. The sons of Heth answered Abraham saying to him, hear us, my Lord, you are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead and the choices of our graves. None of us will refuse you his grave for burying your son. So he wants to buy a grave, buy some land. And they're saying, no, we'll give it to you. So Abraham rose and bowed before the people of the land. And he spoke to them saying, if, if it is your wish for me to bury my dead out of my sight, hear me and approach Ephron, the son of Zohar for me, that he may give me the cave of Mount Pelic, Pella, which he owns, which is at the end of the field, for the full price. Let I will buy it for the full price, mm -hmm. is what he's saying to them. Now, Ephraim was sitting among the sons of Heth, and he answered, saying, um, No, my Lord, hear me. I give you the field. And I give you in the cave that's in it, in the presence of the sons of my people, I give it to you. Bury your dead. Mm -hmm. And Abraham bowed before the people of the land. He spoke to Ephraim in the hearing of the people of the land, yep. saying, if you will only please listen to me, I will give you the peace of the land. Accept it from me that I may bury my dead here. Then Ephraim finally answered Abraham, saying, my Lord, listen to me, a piece of land worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between me and you? Go bury your dead. So this, I want you to know, out of all the land that God promised Abraham, I'm going to give you the land here. I'm going to give you the land there. All through the Bible. Yeah. This is the only piece of land he ever bought. <laughs> the only piece of land yeah. he ever paid for. Okay. And silver was like on rolls of paper, like plates. They were rolled up. And they would carry the silver around with them to, hmm. to, to buy things. That's how it was done like that. It was like paper. Yeah. Rolled up paper. Okay. So he gives them the money. Ephraim's field, which is there, he, you know, yeah. so Abraham has a procession of the presence of Heth before all he went in the gate of the city. After this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field at this place, facing Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. Mm -hmm. That was the promised land. She was, she was buried in the land of the promise. Mm -hmm. So the field and the cave that is in it were deeded over to Abraham for a burial site by the sons of Heth. Now, I want to mm -hmm. talk to you a little bit about Sarah. This is really interesting, okay? Um, Sarah, let me see, let me find it. Um, 
what was I going to write about Sarah? Oh. She's put to, she's just, she dies now. Mm -hmm. That represents the death of the old Israel. Okay. And you're going to see in the next chapter is the birth of the church. <laughs> Okay, I want you to see that parallel there. Not that not that she was wasn't good, you know, Sarah. She was she was she was the woman, you know, the mother of all mothers, you know, like with yeah. Abraham. But God says when she was buried, that was the end. That was like yeah. the Israel 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 dying. Okay. Yeah. Even and though it hasn't even been birthed yet. Yeah, and it's also worth knowing, I don't know if you recall in Hebrew eleven, Sarah. It's credited as being in the and the hall of faith. Hall of faith, yes, the yeah. hall of faith, yes, yeah. So I mean, it's pretty interesting, you know, what's happened with her at this point. Um, you're gonna, we'll talk more about it next chapter <laughs> about, but about Sarah's life. But um, I just want to, I'm just gonna read these these three things to you. In chapter 22, Isaac okay. is given up. Yep. It was offered up as a sacrifice. Chapter 23, Sarah is laid aside, which represents Israel. Mm -hmm. Chapter 24, the servant of the Holy Spirit is sent forth to catch a bride <laughs> for Isaac, which represents Jesus. Yep. And that's the church. Yep. Okay. The, the Old Testament, the law gets replaced and fulfilled with Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. So I, I, that's what I have. There's not a heck of a lot there in 23. I mean, I mean, if I looked up every single word, there oh, would be. But actually, um, I did look do some research some time ago on, on that real estate deal. It was something that's actually typical in the Middle East. So yes. we're seeing something that Abraham knew. That it wasn't that the uh, land wasn't going to be given for free, but right. he felt an obligation to say, I don't want to take advantage. Yes. And it was beautiful how Abraham uh, handled the whole situation. Yes, he did. Good. Yes, it was. And unfortunately, it's one of the few times we get to see that not everybody in that area was, was bad, but, right. the, but still, there were some problems. <laughs> right, right. This is actually a hard uh, message for me to share because I don't usually think to do these things. So I'll start off with some prayer and end with a word of comfort. Father, I know there are many people who are grieving right now, who are struggling with the loss of a loved one. Perhaps they were in a long relationship with a spouse uh, like Abraham. And it is painful when we lose someone we love for, and, been met, and been with for so long. <laughs> and yet, I know there are parents who lost a child, something no parent should have to go through. Or they're like myself, you lose a younger brother or you lost your parents. <laughs> But thankfully, Father, you are one who draws close to those who are hurting and are able to bring about healing. So I ask, Father, for healing to come to each person that's watching. You know the right words of comfort. You know the right message. And I ask, Father, you would touch the heart and mind of the friends and family or even the pastors or whatever it is to reach out to those who are hurting and that they would know how, what to say and what not to say. <laughs> Father, ask that your spirit would just be with those who are comfort, so that though they mourn through the evening, joy comes in the morning. <laughs> and yes, it's okay if it takes time. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, it's hard. Uh, you should have seen the number of of rejects I had to do for this, because it's not easy. <sighs> and if you happen to be somebody who knows someone is suffering, go spend some time with the person. Sometimes the best thing you can do is not to say anything, just be there. Or maybe uh, just take them for uh, a taco. 
No, not because taco is uh, super healthy or anything. No, it's called fun food. You have fun because sometimes you have to do things. And no, for those of you guys who are saying, well, I don't want, you're not going to. As I told my mom long before she passed, that I'm going to remember you both in truth and love. Same thing with my dad. <laughs> Same thing could go for my younger brother, who I didn't get a chance to say that to. And I also want to encourage you, uh, if you did have problem relationship with your parents or the other way around, forgive them. Forgive and let go and let God. I know that's not always easy <laughs> and painful. But I can assure you, God is faithful to help you through the painful moment. And if you have, and I trust that the Holy Spirit will touch heart and mind uh, to those who may know someone who to reach out. Remember, you don't always have to know what to say. Just being there. <laughs> and talking about this, it brings a bit of sense to you because I guess I'm still hurting. <laughs> And let's see, my dad passed away in March 2000. Hmm, it's now 2023, as per the date of the recording. My mother, 2021, I believe? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Anthony, a lot longer. So, yeah. Well, I. <sighs> I want to thank you for your time. Hope you have a blessed day. And hope you'll come back for the next video, which will be uh, very interesting and have some hopefully good tips for you as well.